it really was started off as a pipe dream. Me and Ash, we used to spend hours in the car driving to Brisbane every day and he had the same battles that I did day to day. When I moved to Australia I was working amongst the trees. I've always had a passion for wildlife anyway but just blown away by the wildlife here. It was in trees that I was climbing on a weekly basis and sadly removing those trees and, and a lot of the things that I saw working from the inside of that big industry. Sometimes it was heartbreaking, you know, to see what we have to do. That's really where Habitech was born. Just talking about how we could do things differently. So I started off as a groundsman for climbers when I was about 17. I was lucky enough to meet a guy called John Goodfellow. I was so lucky to go under his wing, if you like, and he was my, my mentor. He showed me the bigger picture of how we view trees and also the shortfalls, I think, in the arb industry and it's so easy and what we've done over the last 20 to 30 years is missed that point of why, why trees do what they do and why they do what they do. Uh, how wildlife depend on, on the trees and how that cycle is so important and quite often we, we miss out on opportunities, we prune out opportunities and we lose so many opportunities in the way that we manage our trees for future habitat. When we say a tree has failed, it means it's dropped a limb or it's dropped a large bough or something. So something in the tree has failed. And that's our terminology that, that we've created. The tree knows exactly what it's doing and without tree failure, there wouldn't be hollows. So it, it has to follow that cycle. Nevertheless, as arborists, we need to prune trees for safety. So the big question is how can we prune trees for safety? How can we maintain the trees that are around us, but at the same time not lose habitats in the process. Lose those hollows, those, they're so valuable, but yet we remove those hollows or the opportunity for future hollows in you know, a quick blip with a chainsaw and it's all, it's all undone. There's over 300 Australian native animal species that rely on hollows for rearing their young and for shelter. For the first time now, we're hearing reports of overcrowding of hollows. So you can imagine like a frog uh, and a sugar glider and a bird all trying to coexist in one hollow. There's just, there just aren't enough hollows. Um, there just aren't enough hollows. I just like, liked his attitude to trees. It wasn't just about getting rid of them and, and killing them. When I explained how much I love wildlife and birds and that sort of thing, and I'm trying to create this habitat garden, he explained that they do these uh, habitat holes. And I was like, really? Hollows of this size, naturally, this could, it could be anywhere from 100 years to 250 years upwards and we can carve those as a tree in a solid limb. You know, 20 minutes in an hour we'll have a hollow created. Working with my brothers it definitely has its challenges, but I do love it. I think it's a good thing for the quality of work as well, especially between Ross and Dan. They're very competitive, so they're always pushing each other and who does the best hollow, who's the best at carving. Depending on what sort of animals I wanted to attract, it would you know, be the size of the, the entrance hole. These are logs or branches that would otherwise just go for a chipper. They take an actual plate off the back of the tree and then dig the hole out and put this plate back on. I didn't realise to the end of it, I went, oh wow, that is an actual plate. I said, I really want this. I think it's a great use of a tree. And that's what we're trying to achieve, this habitat. Garden. That was really what became my passion, I suppose, to, to change that or at least try and do something 